Hi there, I'm Dr. Capella, and I'm here to welcome you to View from the Top, a project of Builders with God Ministry. Join us as we go on an insightful journey, gaining perspectives from God's Word. I want to implore you to grab a pen and a notebook, jot down a lesson or two, and write down the things that minister to you as you watch this episode of View from the Top. And if you are yet to subscribe to this channel, now is the time to do so. Stay tuned and don't go anywhere. The journey is just about to begin. Welcome to View from the Top, a production of Builders with God Ministry. I am your host, Patade Elias, and I'm thrilled to have you here with me today. So this session makes it the fourth episode on the topic, The Church on Trial, Making Sense of It All. Last week, we were urged to um, beware of legitimate grievance. But before we get started, I would love to implore you to subscribe to this channel and turn on your notification to get updates. Please feel free to engage us on our social media handles currently displayed on the screen. Um, so without further ado, please let's jump right in. Join me to welcome the man of God, Pastor Dewey Hillary. Thank you, people at home, for being available. Thank you, people in the studio. You are welcome in Jesus' name. Um, continuing on our topic, church on trial, making sense of it all. We are trying to see today some of the particular issues that may jump at us in our time of the things that are happening and uh, connect them to the scriptures so that we can be better informed and gain more wisdom in how to respond rather than react. That's the major we're going to be doing in this episode today. We read from Luke chapter 18 how that that man, the unjust judge, did not fear God, neither regard man. And I'm going to show to you that there's more to it than the English Bible was able to show us that we actually make you to see picture-perfect reflection of what is happening in our time and how we need to take it. Now, I have a few headlines here of actual videos on YouTube. I just want to mention the topics. They are too, some of them are too abominable. I'm just uh, taking um, liberty to mention them, not to talk of, show them on this channel. I don't know, some of us will have watched some of them. I wrote them down, so let me just read them out. Somebody was accused of demanding 90% tithe from a so-called daughter in the Lord. That God told him that the guy should be paid 90% tithe going forward. Uh, even those who don't go to church, they know what tithe is. Man of God, in responding to very serious and obnoxious allegations with evidences, claimed that he was stepping down uh, for some time because of the matter. However, he will be teaching those who want him to be teaching them. We'll be doing Bible study with those who still want things to be teaching him. And he gave the date that he was coming back. Can anybody interpret what I just said in the studio? I want to be sure I'm not speaking to vacuum. Do you understand the implication of what I said? This second one. Who can explain the implication? I see now. Some of you don't even understand here. So, what the implication of? So the person said, "Look, I'm stepping out. I'm stepping down because of what I've done." And uh, the only thing is that I'll be doing Bible study with some people that want me to still continue doing Bible study for them. And uh, by January, I'll be okay, I'll be back fully. So what do you make out of that? It's a, a man that do not uh, fear God. Okay, how? You know, because, because of the scandals, I believe that we should step down in humility and seek the face of God. Okay. Concerning the story around his life. Okay. But him right there saying, I'm going and I'm coming back. 
Um, also, so did. Also, so did. Also, so did. He didn't even know whether God will permit him to come back again. You know. So saying that means he's not taking instruction from God. You, you. I think you. I think you have captured the essence of it. Thank you. Um. I mentioned that to show us that a lot of criminal things that we do in the name of Jesus, they are annoying enough, but the dimension we have added to it is our defense of them or response to them. Some is complete defense. We have like 200 cases hanging on your neck and you are jumping from nation to nation doing crusade. And the world is asking, even when the church is silent, what's going on here? You are saying all these people are lying? Is it not even, even when in a place of work you have issues, they ask you to step down so that you will not. Let's check. Let's check. Even if you are innocent. 15, 20, 35 cases, only you? And deviance. That is more criminal than the crimes committed. And the world is nothing. I'm not sure where everything is driving to. The world is nothing. So that when they begin to revolt against us, we will not think, oh, it's the devil. Like I said, there is a place of persecution, but this one is punishment for the church. And God is permitting it for the cleansing of the body, for the glory of his name, because we have misrepresented him so grossly that if God does not come clear on his standards, then we will have actually obliterated God's witness on earth. So God has to do something about it. And what he's doing about it is to allow bloggers, vloggers, and everybody to begin to deal with us like I said the other time, you want to drive traffic to your to your social media and do just bring that bad story about a pastor. Very simple, very easy way. That's where we are now. So when you see this kind of the responses, the way we react to things like that, they are so annoying. And I'm saying we all should be wary at our different levels. The people we are talking about now are people that the whole world is saying. But these things are happening at every level. It's very easy to focus on those and forget yourself. One thing you cannot take from the disciples, something that they did that was so spiritual, even when they were very unspiritual, was when Jesus said, one of you will deny, will betray me. They didn't just jump and say, hey, that should be Timothy, that should be Peter. Oh, that should be Paul. Oh, sorry, that should be John. That should be Bartholomew. Oh, is, yeah. is it I? So it's very easy for us to be too focused on people's error, until we ourselves are engulfed in our own errors. But because we are not up there, I always tell young ministers, I said, look, those that are up there, they are up there, so it's very easy for you to see under their skirt. <laughs> so you can see what is under their skirt, because they are up. But you that is down here, we don't know what is under your skirt. But you know. So if you don't check you, you may continue in your error. What you are shouting about them may be happening to you at your own level. Those are the cautions I feel I should give to us in dealing with these issues. Satan is taking advantage of this wrong to make many more people to become wrong who are otherwise right. And these are the issues I'm trying to target. I have another one here. People threaten those who expose them with madness, threaten them with death, both by cost and by any other means. Have you come across such on social media where a man of God is threatening to take some of this life, to delete them with records to show? So, I'm, trying, I'm showing you, a man doesn't get to that point in one day. You must have left off accountability the longest time ago. 
So you are now in a world where you are God. That's when you can begin to behave like that. And I'm saying, at our different levels, we should check out ourselves too. Are you not even following the same thread, the same trajectory that they have followed? So that you will not be too focused on that wrong and too focused on you, thinking that you are the one that is the policeman of the church. Until you yourself, you are caught up in your own or in the same thing. Because the stats code does not only say Galatians says one that you should be uh you should be spiritual, it says you should do it in meekness and fear. When these things are missing, we are not serving God, we are serving ourselves. Praise God. There is a video that shows where Yahoo boys were spilling money in such church, throwing bundles of money like this. Even people that throw parties now, they are cautious. We are caught in the web. There's a video where a woman was breastfeeding a man in the church, a preacher, a preacher woman. Brought out her breast and put it in the mouth of a man in the church. It was not a play because I had to first check it. It happened. And many of you have heard about the onion, how do you call this? Onion something ministry. Breast and onion ministry. A certain man in Kenya who does deliverance by sucking women's breasts. Relate this to Luke 18. No fear of man, no fear of God, no regard for man. I'm showing you why things will happen the way they will happen. Ghanaian pastor bath members inside the church. Those are videos that are on YouTube, you can confirm. And I don't advise you to go and check them. Except to just be sure that I'm not lying. <laughs> they are not edifying. But they are happening. And nothing is... You just hear about it and it continues. I'm telling you why God will visit his church. But not the way we think. And I want to show you an example of how that's going to happen. But let's quickly go back to that. Luke 18, before I show you how it's going to happen. Luke 18, verse 2, particularly. Luke 18, verse 2. Yes. Saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. That word that was interpreted as regard man. Is entrepo. I want to read it to you as it is in the lexicon. Entrepo. To save time, the summary of it is that it is not just that he does not reference man or does not regard them, he has no shame. Go and check it. Entrepo. It's actually the root word is from the word shame. That means that, you know, I, I was not connecting that. Okay, you have to have regard to for man, for you to think that, oh, I don't want to be seen as this. <laughs> you understand? So, that word is actually rooted in shame. When we lose shame, I think it's close to losing our consciences. The question is, on which matters have you left? Have you lost shame? You don't care. You say, I don't care. Anybody can say what they like and do what they like. You should care to the extent that you affect the name of the Lord and his glory on earth. Are we together? So there's that point of shame I wanted to bring out. Shame is not necessarily a bad thing. It is a signal that there is something you have to address. Are you following what I'm saying? So don't think that it is faith when you don't have shame, when you don't have regard for men. It's a sign that you are very right. You are sure of yourself. Do you know that's the way it disguises itself? Oh, that would be good. He says, who had no fear of others' opinions. Exactly. And many Is that times, yes, many times we, we say, oh, I don't care what people think. I don't care. And we say it to show that, to show I'm, that sure I'm strong in my um, perspective. Correct. So that is the trap I want us to avoid. That's why I went back to that. I want us to avoid that trap. But now let's see how these things are going to play out. 
Ezekiel chapter 9. Ezekiel 9 verse 1. He cried also in my ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near, even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lieth towards the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen, with a writer's inkhorn by his side, and they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. And the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereupon it was, to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's ink. I want you to note that the glory of God was in that house that was going to be judged. Does it compute? You think the glory of God means that God is pleased? The glory was there. But it was there to judge, to personally supervise the judgment of his house. But somebody who's seen the glory will say, Oh, God is with us. No, God is here. It doesn't mean he's with us or he's for us. I'm saying we can see the miracles. Hello? I'm saying we can see the big crusades. But the question is, why is the glory of God here? So don't be deceived. Let's go on. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations, abominations that, that be, be done in the midst So we cannot keep quiet in the name of love. In fact, that is not love. Love does not rejoice in iniquity. However, God has not given us mandates to judgment. It's not now. <laughs> that time has not come. God has that so prerogative to judge man, but we can judge things according to the word of God. Are we together? So if we are doing that, God is saying that if we mark those who are doing that, sigh and cry. They are not only speaking, they are groaning against it. Because talking is cheap. Anybody can pick something wrong and talk about it. The question is, what do you do in your closet about it? Are you praying about this evil? Because it's an attack against the name of the Lord. It's beyond your personal anger. What are you doing about it? It didn't say those that cry about against it. First of all, they do what? They sigh. They don't just go to their computer and start worrying. It is in the place of sign, they know even what to say, how much to say, what not to say when they are dealing with that matter, when they come out. But we think that all we need to do is to speak. And we get ourselves also entangled, either in the same error or other errors, in the name of trying to, to cry. It didn't say you should mark those that cry. You must sigh. Because it's in sign. You will know even whether you have to speak about it or keep quiet. If I didn't sigh, I would have done this message, was it three years ago? Evan? And I would have messed up big time. You know why? <laughs> where God has moved, how God has moved me from where I was, see now, <laughs> I would have regretted doing this message three years ago, publicly. This one is so nice now, coming out this way. It's like, I will have been a victim of it myself. That's why you need to sigh. It's not just that I pick up things. And say, ah, finally, we got this. Let's finish him. So that we can come up. Let's press him down. At least we have case against him. If that is the attitude, it's the wrong attitude. It's the wrong attitude. It should be the honor of the name of the Lord that is propelling you. Not your personal anger. Not personal vendetta because you have always hated this guy. It's too loud. I pray the church will hear my voice. <laughs> Go ahead, please. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. Who are they suffering here? God's people. These are God's people. They are slaughtering. Who is ordering slaughtering? 
Who is supervising it? Does he have to come and supervise it? Is that serious? When he say his glory was there, that means that the whole entourage followed him to come and supervise it. That's where the church is now. Go ahead. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark. Who are those? Those who sigh? Not those who are just crying. Don't be a cry baby concerning the things of the church. Like I said, until you sigh, you don't even know whether you are supposed to cry on the matter. It's not everybody that has a right to cry about every matter. There are things that is not given to you to cry about. You just sigh. It is the place of sigh you will know how far to push. Go ahead. And begin at my sanctuary. Oh, oh. begin where? So what beware? Is coming for you too. So that's just the beginning. Begins my And see how it's going to begin. I want to see the other. There are three levels. Go ahead. Then they began at the ancient men. They did not just start from the followers in church. They started from the them them. So even the followers are clapping. They are happy. God is judging them. All these pastors, all these people, God is judging them. God is judging them. Your own is coming. If you are wise, you begin to check yourself. The things that are due for God's judgment in your own life and begin to judge them before God's judgment comes. That's the wise way to respond. These are the key things I want to emphasize to you. You are not happy. Ah, finally, they will be flying jets all over the place. So your problem is their money. It's not Jesus' name and His glory. That's your problem. And that means you have a problem yourself. That person's issue is only bringing out your own problem. Go and deal with it rather than go to the, to the computer and be typing. You are just envious. Deal with your issue. It's not computer you go to. You go to God. You go to the closest. And sign there. Are we together? So just start from the ancients. But it doesn't stop there. So, but when the ancient have been dealt with, the small ones will be clapping. Ah, praise God. Oh, yeah. We have been waiting for it. No problem. Your own is coming. You are wise. Deal with yourself. Go ahead, please. Because of time. He began at the ancient men which were before the house. And he said unto them, Defile the house and fill the courts with the slain. Go ye forth. And they went forth and slew in the city. Aha. Uh -huh. Do you see that? He started with the ancients. Then he said, Deal with everybody. No, no, before that. The followers were dead with him immediately after. Then he now said, Some people are fasting and praying that God will judge politicians in Nigeria. You are wasting your, you are wasting your fast. Because until he judges, you will not judge them. You should spend your time fasting and praying that you should be where you ought to be and be who you ought to be. God is in charge. He's not looking for your advice. He knows what to do. He knows when to do it. What is important is your part in it all. Don't be too concerned about other people's part. Apart from sighing and crying for the abominations in the land. That's the only reason why we are mentioning these things. How can you have a ministry? Your own is you lose the difference only for women. And it's by sucking their breasts. Do you think a babalawo will do that in the open? Answer. Do we do it in the open? We do it in the open. You see what I'm saying? You see that the church is ripe for what we are talking about now. So, what message are we sending to the unbelieving world? This is on video. They are not play. They are not drama. We are, if you have regard for man, you will ask his wife to remove his dress before an audience of people in the church with camera on them. And you will be 
helping them to have their bath in the church. I saw it too. And it was not drama. When a generation gets to this point, they first got to come down in his glory to supervise the judgment. Go ahead, please. And it came to pass, while they were slaying them, and I was left, that I fell upon my face and cried and said, Ha, Lord God, will thou destroy all the residue of Israel in thy pouring out and thy fury upon Jerusalem? Then said he unto me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great. And it's what? Yes. But do you know that what God was called exceeding great here? Is nothing compared to what we are, what we are doing now. Nothing to compare to it. And when anybody dares to speak, we want to bully them into silence. It's exactly the weapons of the world. Some other time I will talk about that. I will use the weapon of the world in the church today as our main weapon. And how disgusting it is to God. Go ahead, please. And the land is full of blood, and the city full of perverseness. For they say, the Lord hath forsaken the earth, and the Lord seeth not. Do you see that? So they don't take God into account. They don't mind God. That's why they can get to that point. They don't mind God. It doesn't make any difference. God, is, as far as they are concerned, God is holding heaven, we are holding here. <laughs> Go ahead, please. And as for me also, my eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense their way upon their head. Do you really, how many times do you hear God talk like this? About these people. They had pushed God into the war. You know, when you push Anything to the world. Now they have pushed God inside the wall. And God said, ah, ah. Okay, I'll tell you I'm still here. <laughs> God has not changed for your information. God has not changed. He will put his church. And our prayer is that God will help us to take it to these things. So there will not be among them that will be pushed out. But that can only that prayer can be answered only if we continually purge ourselves of these things. Those who will not connect for themselves will punch out. It is then that the glory of God will fill the house of God as water covers the sea. It is after that it can cover the earth as water covers the sea. Do you understand? The knowledge of his glory will cover the earth as water covers the sea. After it has covered his house, we only drop only to that end point. But it has to start from the house. And that cannot happen until there is this project we are talking about. And behold, the man clothed with linen, which had the inkhorn by his side, reported the matter, saying, I have done as thou hast commanded me. Chapter 10, verse 1. No, no, okay. Maybe to four, up to 4. So that we can read about the, about the intensity of how God repeatedly talk about those that sigh and cry. That should be our disposition to all of these things. Not to try and bring the man of God down. Because, ah, he has been too evil. He has brought the... Blah, blah, blah. That should not be... Your, leave God for that. With that. This is your own job. Are you getting my point? Your job is sigh, cry. And when you are sighing and crying, you, it must be from the right motive. Truth can only be spoken in love to get God's result. Then I looked and behold, in the firmament that was above the head of the cherubims, there appeared over them as it were a sapphire stone, as the appearance of the likeness of a throne. And he spake unto the man clothed with linen, and said, Go in between the wheels, even under the cherub, and fill thy hand with coals of fire from beneath the cherubims, and scatter them over the city. And he went in in my sight. Remember, the slaying had been done in the temple and in the city. At this additional, you know, fire is for purification. Even the city will be purified. 
I'm praying for you need to go back to our series on the uh, intercession. Those who are praying for the new Nigeria. This is what we bat this new Nigeria. It's not going to be premised on the foundation of corruption that is on ground now. There will be a point, there will be a cleansing, there will be fire to put this in order. Then you can talk about something. And that's why I said in that message that it's not going to be as quick as we wish. It's a long process that will lead to that. Yes, up to verse 4, please. Now cherubim stood on the right side of the house when the man went in, and the clouds filled the inner court. Then the glory of the Lord went up from the cherub and stood over the threshold of the house. And the house was filled with the cloud, and the court was full of the brightness of the Lord's glory. Thank you. Now what else do we need to do at this point? Knowing that these things will be. I see that judgment as a foreshadow for us where we are still here. Is a similitude of what will happen at the judgments, Bema's judgment seat of Christ. Even at the Bema judgment seat of Christ, what those self-righteous keyboard warriors don't know is that it is a work of the saints that will be judged. Their works will be judged. Because they have moved from condemnation to life. We are condemning the people. We leave the works. Even at the Bema city, that's what we have. What we you go used to judge? First Corinthians 4 5. I'm showing you now what you should take it to so that you will not be a victim of the coming judgment. Therefore, judge nothing before the time, until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness, and will make manifest the counsels of the heart, and then shall every man have praise of God. So even when I think I'm doing the right thing, what's my motivation? What is my motive? What is propelling me? Am I happy that this guy that is my rival in ministry, He's getting it wrong. And I take full advantage to finish him. Thank God I did not ask him to go and do it. So I've got a good excuse. God is saying it. He knows you are not fighting for him. In fact, you can't even fight for God in the first case. But you, you are telling all of us that you are the one that is God has sent to preserve the church. <laughs> but he knows. So what is the lesson for you? The lesson for you and for myself here is that in all we do at this time, we have got to the point that we have to more than ever check our motives. Because those are the parameters of God's judgment, not action. It is heart, not act. And let's reverse it a little. Let's reverse it. In the same way, even those that are wrong, God is going to judge the heart, not judge the act. And you don't know the heart. That's why you have to be careful. God said of David, who committed mm. adultery, who committed murder, eyes open. He's a man after my heart. He will do all my counsel. Hello? Do you see carefulness? Now, those of us who are not very strong, we just choose to be weak. I learned there's an adage. It's unfortunate I don't know how to say it in Igbo language. They say, a coward will stand on the grave of the brave to tell the story of why he died. Is it correct? Is there something like that? A coward he will stand on his grave and tell the story of how he died. Give a microphone. <laughs> Let her help me. <laughs> yes, uh, um, what uh, you are actually saying is that it is in the house of the coward 
that you will stay to point <laughs> to the house, house of, of the of the, oh, the mighty man the, yes the brave warrior quotes. the warrior okay <laughs> no because because by, by then, that the, the house is desolate hey, hey, exactly is, that's the main point it's on the same stand and say that we are the house so you can see the reason for some of our weaknesses our own <laughs> praise god praise god so we need to check our motives for whatever we are doing. One of the things we have been doing for long, go back and ask yourself, why did I start? Why am I doing this? Because that's what God is looking at. He's looking at the heart. How could God say that of David? He even counted people. Because of him, thousands died. God says, a man after my heart. I had a message many years ago. I call it Paul, the the good the the goodliest or something. I you I coined one word, the Saul, the goodest of them all. The goodest. Go and check the Bible very well. You hardly see any moral case against King Saul. I'm going to show you the limitation. Your incapacity to judge man. Mm, okay. All right. All right. Oh, we should leave them. Have I said so? Go and listen to the <laughs> to what I've said before now. Even in this series, in this episode. You are incapable. You don't have what it takes. Go and check the Bible. You hardly find them with any moral issue. And David had several of them. Hello. Let us fear. Can you see how incompetent we are in judging people? You don't know the hearts. And that's the criterion God will use to judge men. So you can judge things. You can see those ones. You have the scriptures. You can see them. The, the Egyptian midwives. What does the Bible say about them? What did God do to them? The Bible says God established their homes for their kindness to history. And the kindness they showed was based on what? <laughs> that thing you know, has always worried me. I don't want to go too far. <laughs> but the message I want to pick from here is you are incompetent to judge men. You say it worries you. Do you know the meaning of... Let me quickly just help you along that line within the space of time I have. It's not different from when Jesus told them to uh, told uh, the woman caught in adultery in John chapter 8. As no man condemns you, he said, no, Lord. Neither do I. Go and say no more. You know why? The reason was that they had no capacity not to sin when she sinned. She had no choice but to sin. And those that wanted to kill her, if Jesus said they should kill her, they all deserve death. So the people he came to die for, he would have killed all of them. But it looked like Jesus was tolerating nonsense. We holiness preachers. We, we couldn't have said that. True or true? True or true? Uh, <laughs> praise God. These ladies, they had an intuition that these people ought to be preserved. They yielded themselves to God's knowledge. And the best they had was what they used. So you can do all your exegesis and analysis onto paralysis. It doesn't bother God. God does. The Bible says, in, I think that's Second Corinthians 9 or so, it is expected of the man to give for what he has and not what he doesn't have. That was the best they had. And they gave it to God. They didn't have power to tell Pharaoh. We can't do it. They didn't have power to tell him, don't do it. That was the best they had. 
do you know that God spoke through idol before? Okay, you can remember. It's very clear now. At least you remember the witch of Endor, second Samuel 28. I'll be first Samuel 28. That should be. Remember. But that's not even what I'm, I'm, I'm referencing now. This one is around first Samuel, I think it's around chapter. From chapter 4 forward. When the ark was captured by Philistines, and the Philistines and Dagon broke before before the ark in the house of Dagon. And they were tired of the embarrassments. They wanted to send the ark back. They went to consult Oracle. I'm showing you, you don't have what it takes to judge people. <laughs> These people went to consult the oracle which they knew would tell them what to do. They did not consult a prophet of God. They consulted oracle, their own oracle, which was even inferior to Dagon. <laughs> they are trying to save. And they were told exactly what they needed to do. Because that was the only way they thought they could get to know the truth. You can do all your exegesis and whatever call it any name, but it led them to their redemption in God. God did not say, What? You went to ask concerning me from my for that case, I will destroy all of you. That was the best they knew. That was the very best. I said, some people, they want to die. Eh, eh, my father, my mother. If that was the best they knew, the way they train you, they might not have done well. But if that was the best they knew, brother, they will get their reward from God. And it's a good one. So, let's concentrate on judging ourselves. Let's concentrate on judging things. If we get this, I think we have a sinner church and a sinner society. And we'll be less liabilities. We'll be less of noise makers before the world that we are supposed to be witnesses of God unto. We wanted to say something. Okay. Um, where you landed about let's concentrate on judging ourselves. Um, and I'm kind of just taking it back to the story of the uh, Egyptian women. And because it's also possible, I think what I'm taking away really is the fact that they did the best they could within the con what they had, they they, them, yes. that they found themselves. As a believer, I know better. I know better. I have more resources. Correct. So, because it's also possible for people to then revert and say, well, God bless the Egyptian women um, for that. Therefore, that's the route, you know, that I will take, you know. So, I just wanted to kind of okay. mention that. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I think we had a discussion around that. Oh, yes. okay, in a previous. Yes, we uh, had a previous discussion around that. Okay. Yeah, because uh, if you don't clarify that, you know, you can't do everything within sure. space you have on. Uh, you don't clarify that some people can even go and say, "Look, it doesn't matter. God knows that there is nothing else I could do." Mm. You, know, you know, some people teach today they are still saying that uh, the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. So therefore. Whereas that, that, is, that is invalidated by the New Testament. Mm. Because the Spirit has quickened us. Mm. Romans chapter 8, 11. <laughs> so, we, we don't, there is nothing, no excuse of Spirit. Once the Spirit is willing, is has also quickened our mortal bodies. So, we are no longer weak. But so there's somebody, no need for me to go to idols to come and look for God. He dwells look for within. God. Thank you. Mm. I know better. Mm. I but know that was the best they had. At the time. And God did not kill them for it. It did not mean it liked it. Mm. The same way that their sins were only covered in the New Testament. Mm. 
It was eating with them as if they were not sinners. Correct. But they were sinners. Correct. Their sins were only eating. Until Correct. Christ came, no sin was limited. Correct. <laughs> Do you understand? Yes. I am saying I'm going to this extent to show you people that we you don't have what it takes people. to judge people. So let's see where God. What God has given to us to do is more than enough. Let's stay there. Don't be resting with God in his own territory. I think I should just rest my case there today. The Lord bless you. Amen. Thank you so much, sir. That was really insightful. A um, few take home points for me will be that we should always concentrate on ourselves and purge ourselves. We should always check our motives and we should always concentrate on judging ourselves and things, not people. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for staying tuned with us till this moment. Um, we hope to come in um, your way again next time. Stay blessed.